our guest tonight is a DJ, broadcaster, promoter, and recording artist. Um, in, 90, in, in the 1980s, his work in hip-hop concert promotions helped create the blueprint for Canada's hip-hop scene. Um, in 1983, he became the host of the Fantastic Voyage on CKL and 88.1 FM, um, which I believe was Toronto's first hip-hop radio show. If not the first, definitely the most influential. Um, and at that, at the show provided the, the foundation, the inspiration for DJs, and basically other people to do, start their own shows. Um, and you know, aside from that, um, he, uh, this person also released his own uh, single called B-Boy Destruction um, in 1988. Um, he also produced the, the um, essentially produced or had you know the Dream Warriors produce their entire first album in his house in the basement of his house. Um, he produced a couple of tracks on that album. Uh, you might know it was called "And Now the Legacy Begins," and it was like a worldwide hit. And aside from that, he also started another show called Reggae Mania, um, and um, he, was, he went on to become a uh, you know a promoter in the, de the reggae and dancehall scene. And last year, he got a star on the Scarborough Walk of Fame. And he's about, <laughs> he's about to release a, uh, an album, uh, which is called, apparently, Create uh, Appropriately 40 Years Too Late. And, <laughs> and, and in 2023, um, this marks the 40th year of, the sh of his show, The Fantastic Voyage. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Ron Nelson. DJ Ron, DJ Ron. Hey, I think, are you ready for this musical journey to change? Good? Good. 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 All right, you can go. Oh. Get up, Toronto! You must be prepared for this magic. All right. Take off my Boston hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's I'm, a, cool. I'm a Leaf fan, just so you know. But. Okay. I have a hockey song on my album, and Bobby Orr is like my favorite player when I grew up here, you know? So, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so whatever, what's makes, happening, you, whatever man? makes you comfortable. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> thank you for being here. Thank it's you. my pleasure. This has been a great year for me so far. A lot of uh, good publicity and attention, and I guess the irony for, you know, anybody who goes back to my era is that back then we didn't have this love. We didn't have this unity. We had a lot of people fighting against progress and you know it, it, all the time that I did my radio show nobody said Ron you're doing a great job it was just one of those things you kind of just did and you know so it's nice that after 40 years <laughs> <laughs> finally <laughs> I get some flowers after 40 years and people's attitudes have changed now that's a beautiful thing about 2023 you know it's like there's still a little infighting going on, but there's a lot of people now who know how to show love and know how to support their fellow artists, male, female, doesn't matter what they're doing. We, we believe in ourselves a little more now in terms of you know the possibility that somehow music can get us somewhere in life, but before it was like, music, nope, you're gonna be a doctor. Nope, <clears throat> rapping, forget it. So it's kind of nice to be here now and yeah, benefiting from a nicer set of people that's out there, you know. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, without further ado, let's let's get into it. Let's let's get into a little bit of what we're going to talk Let me about. Me shout out tonight. DJ X in the place as well. Yes. Mentor. Actually, yeah. <clears throat> shout out DJ X. He's in the house. Lorraine's in the house. There's X over there. So yeah, this is like my best friend currently in in life. That's the irony. Radio stations. You know, you, you meet a lot of people there. So some of them end up being in your life forever. And I know you haven't asked your first question yet, but I, I just want to... <laughs> you can tell I was a radio broadcaster, eh? No, no, no. Okay, go on. Sorry. <laughs> now, but this, is, this announcement I'm going to make is, is really big for me personally, but um, when I started out as a DJ, I was like the, the guy that played the rock and roll and the new wave and the pop, and I'm talking 1980, um, all the high school dances, 
I would be the, the guy that played Led Zeppelin and the Beatles, and beside me would be my DJ partner who was responsible for all the black music, because I wasn't buying black music at that time. I, I had so much of it in Jamaica. When I came here, I just found it a relief to hear all this other kind of music. So I want to big up somebody I haven't seen in probably 40 years, uh, 35, and he's here tonight. He came out to this. And my original DJ partner from the Fantastic Voyage uh, disc jockey service at this time, he's the one that kind of got me started. We spent hours and hours mixing music, learning um, hip hop. When I did that rap that some of you heard on my Instagram over Evelyn Champagne King, he was the one going back and forth in two turntables, and we didn't have 1200s. We had belt drives at the time. So, Ian, just stand up so everyone can see where you are, please. Uh, please, I know you're humble, but <clears throat> there's Ian. So, appropriate, appropriately enough, I believe this is, the fan, this is before the radio show. This is the Fantastic Voyage crew, the Fantastic Voyage DJs, yes. before the Fantastic Voyage radio show. What's going on in this picture? We, we hardly had any black music records because we bought everything at Mike's Music Shop that we could buy, you know, in Scarborough. And um, Ian was dressing in dress pants and nice shoes, you know, like he was totally opposite than me. I, I did not know how to dress. I still don't know how to dress, actually. But uh, Ian was like that guy that was in the Michael Jackson and Prince and stuff. And his father one day, without knowing it, he said to me one day, hey, we have a loan. His dad uh, gave us money to buy speakers and turntables and a set to go play all the high school dances with. And that's when we got our first experience. We thought we had a sound system, but we did dances with two speakers back then. And <laughs> one so, amplifier. So th this, is, this is, and you guys were going to Victoria Park Secondary School? Yeah, we time? were in Vic Park High. Yeah. And shout out Rob as well. Rob was, where's Rob? Rob, stand up, please, just for a sec. Okay, that's Rob. <clears throat> now, Rob has saved my life many times because he was always my head of security at Concert Hall Party Center. There's some vicious people that came through those doors and he had to protect me from them. So I just oh. why I have to give him love right now and just say thank you, Rob, for all the years of protecting my life because it was dangerous out there back in the days. Cool. So let, let's just let's focus on the, on the school a second because I do believe that you are doing, you know, not only playing these high school dances, but you were doing stuff at the school in terms of with, with music at the time. Oh, and, and yeah, and, um, yeah. so tell me about that. Our school, Vic Park, was full of music heads, um, but there was hardly any black people in the school in 19, again, 79, something like that. All the black people used to sit together in the cafeteria. There's probably like 30 of us, so we all kind of bonded together. But we had one thing in common. We loved music. Because of my experience with Ian, um, we had the idea of, uh, or I had the idea of putting a radio station inside Vic Park High School, which meant talking to all my cool friends that were into music, becoming a kind of a program director without knowing what a pro program director does. And we had this theater arts room and we set up the amplifier in there and we had like 300 foot of speaker wire that ran to the cafeteria. <laughs> And we set up in the, in the little jetpack area, it was like the perfect DJ booth. We set up the turntable, we rented them from um, Dave Summers' disc jockey service at the time. So they stayed there in the room, the mixer and the two turntables. And every morning, every lunch period and after school, uh, we had different DJs scheduled to come in and play music, which would be piped into the school cafeteria and outside in another area as well, all from just manually, you know, using speaker wires back in the days. And ironically, that little feat there is probably what got me into Ryerson because when I did my interview to get in there, they asked me a bunch of questions I didn't know the answer for. And um, they were really impressed with the fact that I did a radio station at, in, in grade 13 at the time. Right. 